Take a look at this. This is a document published in 2017 called The Sparse Pandemic 2025 to 2028 a futuristic scenario for public health risk communicators. It's a quote-unquote hypothetical scenario designed to illustrate the public health risk communication challenges that could potentially emerge during an infectious disease outbreak. It begins with the disclaimer that the infectious pathogen, medical countermeasures, characters, news media excerpts, social media posts, and government agency responses described within are entirely fictional. But in the year 2021, the contents of this 86-page document look more like a gruesome snapshot of our current reality than any hypothetical fictional scenario. This document predicts that at first we will be eased into the pandemic with very simple mitigation strategies, like washing your hands and practicing good hygiene. But that over the course of three years, those simple mitigation strategies will slowly escalate to get this a mass experimental vaccination program. And the purpose of this document is to mull over effective communication strategies for dealing with the public when they become aware that this vaccine has no long-term safety data and that, and this is in their own words, it might potentially be causing more harm than good. This is straight out of the document. What are the potential consequences of health officials over reassuring the public about the potential risks of a novel sparse vaccine when long-term effects are not yet known? Long-term effects that are not yet known. That's weird. I heard from a professional student that long-term side effects don't exist for vaccines. Hang tight, because it gets even more infuriating. Communities around the country went through what some felt was a harrowing public health emergency, only later to confront the possibility, however slim, that the medicine we promised would help them may in fact be hurting them. Summary reports indicated that a significant number of helpline users said that their principal worry was associated with the sparse pandemic and more recently uncertainty about the potential long-term side effects of Coravax. Considering this new knowledge, Dr. Flynn countered the earlier claim that the public simply needed to wait until the science was clear. I urge you to take a look at this document for yourself. You might be pretty shocked by the parallels. It focuses on details such as how to deal with the public when they viewed graphic images of children being harmed by their medical concoctions. It covers the neurological side effects that will be caused by the vaccine. It even covers very specific details such as the black community's hesitance to take the hypothetical vaccine, and more specifically, how to win back the black community's trust in the CDC, even though the CDC funded the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Here's a little hypothetical tweet they've included of a rapper pandering to the black community. When I said yesterday that I was proud of the black community's contribution to the Tuskegee research, I meant that I was proud of how they remain strong in the face of adversity. I am saddened by the injustice and suffering they experienced but I still strongly support the CDC and FDA's recommendations to take Calosevere and Coravax. Sound familiar? I got the vaccine, you got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine. We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine. Now, believe it or not, the end of this document is even more shocking than the casual minimization of 40 plus years of human suffering. It ends by mulling over whether the hypothetical president of the hypothetical pandemic world should address the millions of people who sacrifice themselves to this experimental vaccination. It reads, President Archer agreed to address the country's resolve and recovery in the face of SPARS. Top risk communication advisors from the CDC, FDA, NIH, and SAMHSA conferred as a group about how best to frame the president's remarks. The group vigorously debated whether it was appropriate for the president to acknowledge the sacrifice that vaccine recipients had made on behalf of their communities or to console them in their grief over that sacrifice. That's right, my friends. Back in 2017, your trusted health experts predicted that there would be a pandemic, that that pandemic would result in the rollout of a mass inoculation program, and that that inoculation program would inevitably lead to the death and injury of millions of people.